programmers this is my second C video so our last video we just wanted to print something to the screen we learned that we had to create a function called main because execution for C program starts with main so we'll start with main and to print something to the screen you use print F and we need to remember to always put the semicolon at the end of every line of code so Let's say we want to ask the user, prompt the user, and ask how many puppies do you want? And we want to read in the, from the user typing in at the keyboard, store that into a variable, and then print back to the screen, you want blank puppies. Well, to store the user input into a variable, first we have to create a variable. And C is a strongly typed language, which means we need to decide ahead of time when we're coming up with our variable name, so puppies, for the number of puppies we want, we need to decide at the very beginning, before we even use this for the first time, whether or not it's going to hold integer data, that's numbers without a decimal point, floating point data, numbers with a decimal point, whether it's going to be characters. So I know that you can't have a fractional puppy, a half of a puppy, so I'm going to choose int. Uh, so that creates the variable. If I want to give it an initial value, I can say, well, at the beginning, we'll assume they don't want any puppies. They want zero puppies. And then we need to read in from the user typing in at the keyboard. So how will we do that? Well, there's a command similar to printf, which we'll be able to use by including this standard io.h. The io part stands for input and output. And we've been doing output with printf. Now we're going to do input with scanf. So we want to scan into a variable, and we're storing it in the variable puppies. And this is where things will get a little weird syntax-wise for you, is that scanf needs to know, are we scanning integers, which are four bytes? Are we scanning characters, which are one byte or floating point numbers? So it uses a percent sign and then D is for integers or decimal numbers, F for floating point numbers, C for characters, and this will say scan in an integer, and then we're going to add something right in front of our variable name. So in front of the variable name for an integer or floating point number, we'll add an ampersand. And what an ampersand is, is the address of. So I could actually print to the screen, I could do printf the address of the puppies variable. And then we're going to use that same percent %d if we want to print an address in, uh, in decimal format or a percent %x to print something in hex format. So if I want to see, well, what is the address in memory where this puppies variable is stored, then I could print out using the ampersand in front of my variable name. Okay, so here we're going to read in to the variable puppies, whatever the user types in, and then I kind of gave it away with this print statement here. If we want to embed something from a variable inside of a printf statement, we're going to use the percent sign, and then again, d for integers, f for floating point, c for characters, that is our placeholder, percent D is a placeholder for whatever is stored in this variable puppies. So at runtime, when we're running this, it's going to print you want, and then it's going to substitute in place of percent D whatever is stored in this variable puppies. And then it's going to continue with the print statement and print the word puppies. And we learn backslash N is the uh, new line character. Okay, that's a lot all in uh, one program. So I'm going to exit. And we remembered that we would compile with GCC, and it creates an executable a.out. And so it asks how many puppies I want. And before scanning in, I printed out the address of the puppies variable. And this may be different for you. In fact, it probably will be different for you every time you run the program. And I'm going to type in that I only want uh, two puppies, because puppies are a lot of work. And then it's going to print, you want two puppies. So I'll run this program again. We notice it's picking a different spot in memory, and I can say this time I want three puppies, and it says you want three puppies. Well, there's nothing stopping us in the program from saying that I want negative nine puppies, even though that doesn't make a lot of logical sense. So let's introduce another 
another concept in C, which you should be familiar with from Python or MATLAB, your, your background for this, and that is an if statement. So I'm going to create an if statement and check. And in fact, I'm, I'm happy to comment out this address of the variable that was just making the output harder to read. And I'm going to add an if statement saying, if the puppies variable has something less than zero, then I am going to, instead of printing, you want this many puppies, I'm going to print uh, you, uh, your input is invalid. Or maybe someone really, really doesn't like puppies, and so they said they want negative puppies. I'm not sure there. And then else, I'll say you want this many puppies. So we've got an if and an else, and the if statement is going to have some expression that evaluates to true or false. And if it evaluates to true, we'll go inside the if. If it evaluates to false, we'll go to the else, and we'll print um, you want this many puppies. So let's try running the program again. I'll compile it. Every time you make a change, you'll need to recompile it. And how many puppies do I want? Negative eight puppies. Uh, your input is invalid. Looks like I forgot a new line character there. No problem. I'll run it again with a number six puppies. You want six puppies. So let's keep working on this program. If you have more than one line inside of your if statement, you can in fact, you need to put curly braces at the beginning and the end of your if block. And so if you have one line, you have the option. You can either use the curly braces or not. But if you have two lines, then you're going to need those curly braces. So here I'm just going to exit out of the program with an, a non-zero return code if their input was invalid. And we can build on this even more. So what if the user wants, um, they want 20 puppies or something? That sounds a little crazy. It sounds like there might have been some invalid input there. So we can add uh, we don't have not only an if and an else, but we can do an else if and do puppies. I would say if you have more than five puppies, um, you better have a pretty big backyard and some help. So I've got my print f um, that is too many puppies. So I've got an if, an else if, and an else. So there's three possibilities when I run this. We'll try again with the compile and run it. And let's say I want 15 puppies. That is too many. I forgot the new line character again. I have a negative number that is invalid. I run it again. Two puppies, that's a reasonable number, so you want two puppies. So that's just a brief introduction to if statements. There's a whole lot more complexity you can add with your programs, but that should be enough to get you started.